This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Right now, across the many Disney parks, there are literally dozens of high-tech characters you can watch dance and sing, or even get lucky enough to interact with yourself. These characters range from Mickey Mouse to Clarabelle Cow to Kylo Ren to Iron Man, and even the Mandalorian. But how do these futuristic character interactions work? It's time to unmask the sneaky speaky secrets of Disney parks. What's up, sneaky Disney secret fans? It's Dan here, back with an all new video about talking characters. Look at the comments. Look at all of you people asking for sneaky speaky secrets. I have heard you and now I come to deliver. And before I spill all of Walt's chili beans, make sure you hit that subscribe button and more importantly, make sure to re-ring that bell. For some reason, half of you aren't getting notifications anymore. So it's time to re-ring that bell like a hunchback. In a, in a Catholic area, someplace in Europe. Surprisingly, this speaking technology has been around for literally decades, premiering in my wistful youths. But before we get started, warning, the following episode is not safe for magic. If you or any loved ones still believe in the magic, go ahead and find any of my other amazing videos and watch them instead. Welcome to Pooh Corner birthed the radio controlled costume character. As we've previously covered in our Winnie the Pooh evolution, and you might remember from my Dumbo evolution, where shows like Dumbo Circus continued with the articulated monster mascots. Truly, these things were horrifying. A similar technology was introduced to Disney parks with shows like MGM Studios' Here Come the Muppets and Animal Kingdom's Legend of the Lion King, shown with our favorite silly monkey Rafiki. But his articulation was specifically controlled by the mouth of the performer inside the mask, where later articulated characters would be all controlled robotically. My Best Pal TPM has a really lovely history on these shows and how articulation made its way into the parks. It's really a must watch. But we're not here for the history. We're here for today's secrets. In 2007, the six-month-old show Dream Along with Mickey added talking articulated character heads to the already popular Magic Kingdom Castle show. The Fab Five included Donald, Daisy, Mickey and Minnie, and Goofy, and they could all now talk and blink. These character heads were manually controlled by the cast members inside the costumes. The performer, using a special device attached to the gloved hands, could articulate the eyes and mouths, essentially puppeteering the head that they were wearing with a pre-recorded track. Old versions of the costumes, like Minnie Mouse, even had super visible wires running down the sleeves to her gloves. The device inside the gloves is what's known as a flexible paddle switch, and the device would be triggered by bending a specific finger on a performer's hand. This technology, believe it or not, was first made famous with Nintendo's Power Glove, the most impossible controller in video game history. Yeah, 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 there was a movie about it, right, right, right. To make things a little bit easier for the performer inside the costume, one finger on one hand controlled the blink mechanisms while one finger on the opposite hand controlled the mouth. With a little bit of training, performers can specifically puppeteer the articulated heads to a pre-recorded track flawlessly. If you watch performances carefully when they use these articulated heads, you can easily spot the fingers wiggling, which is why a lot of choreography for this show featured Mickey and friends standing with their hands behind their back. Manually controlled characters are used for one-off events all the time, short-lived shows, and really anything where paying the union rate for programming a radio-controlled device just isn't in the budget. They're literally still used to this day, most recently in the Thanksgiving Day Parade Wish performance. If you watch really closely, you can catch Mickey and Minnie wiggling them fingers, baby. Now, while robot puppeteering head was in full swing for the castle shows, I've been waiting all day for this. A secret initiative to make Mickey talk was underway in Disneyland in 2010. Early play tests of a very special Mickey meet and greet opened to specifically picked visitors of Toontown at Mickey's house before transferring to the Magic Kingdom's town hall in 2011. The talking interactive Mickey required a team of at least four cast members to operate. The performer in the suit, the character attendant, the photographer, and a backstage operator who is controlling the speech from an iPad-like soundboard filled with hundreds of speech options. As you approach Mickey, he enters into a tree of dialogue that depending on what you've said or how you present yourself can progress into multiple branches of conversation. Every iteration opens with a greeting of some kind and then the backstage operator working with multiple hidden cameras begins to set up and cue the performer inside the costume with whatever conversation branch they will likely jump into next. From specialized conversation starters and gags like a magic trick to offering an autograph or suggesting we all take a picture. 
And if they ever get stuck with an unanswerable question or moment, the character lead in the room or the photographer will help guide the conversation back into something Mickey can chat about. How about if Mickey says hi to everybody back at home? Sure, or actually for you too. That's what I was gonna say. And they've literally thought of everything. With the four cast members working as a really tight team, they may single that a foreign language speaker is coming up to the controller who can switch Mickey's dialogue to another language entirely. Or they can tip off the controller to a special celebration button, like an anniversary or birthday, all of which have their own special dialogue branches to go down. Watching the early response to this groundbreaking technology is amazing. The clips of bewildered guests meeting a real talking Mickey is actual magic in my opinion. But the mechanics behind how this new tech works is even more magical. I even unearthed the patent behind the technology to help visualize what is really happening. It's like Mickey Westworld. Yeah, walk in there, Mickey's like, howdy, partner. <laughs> you want a drink? Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> That's Mickey spitting in a spittoon. <laughs> Never thought you'd imagine Mickey spitting, but now you did. You may have thought you were controlling the conversation when you met Mickey, but you weren't. You were just walking down a nice little path laid out by the mouse himself. Let's break it down. Every interaction began with a hello, then could move into a gag, before offering an autograph or a photograph and then ending with a goodbye. At any moment, any of these interactions could be referred back to themselves or can be skipped over. So if no one has an autograph book, we don't have to even go down the autograph branch. And if you don't want a picture, fine, Mickey won't offer it. He'll just say hello and sign something. There's so much flexibility with how Mickey can talk to you. Mickey can even iterate on almost anything he says, repeating the phrase with a different inflection and tone. It comes in handy when Mickey Mouse has multiple family members he needs to hug and say hello to. He can just, hey, how are you? Hi there, nice to see ya. Just the same button clicked over and over again, making the performer's life super easy. The performer inside the Mickey suit has an earpiece, which allows the controller to whisper key words to the performer, specifying the branch of conversation they're about to go down. Here, the controller may have whispered toddler choo-choo, which means the signal, the train interaction, letting the performer know how to gesticulate and move in tandem with what Mickey is saying. And what's really gonna bake your noodle is that for many, many years of Talking Mickey's operation at the Magic Kingdom, the controller controlling everything behind the scenes was sitting in a building backstage at the Animal Kingdom. And then finally, at the end of the interaction, Mickey walking you to the door is the hard reset for the entire thing, making sure that you have exited so the conversation tree can properly restart for the next guest to be greeted by a Mickey Mouse who turns around with an excited hello. The radio controlled technology of speaking heads without a cast member puppeteering them manually would carry over to many a stage show from here on out, with the best examples being the Christmas and Halloween shows, plus the Daily Castle show, Friendship Fantasy Fair. I believe it's actually 2011, 2012. You can literally watch as the costumes are upgraded from their standard blue Dream Along with Mickey into just the Fab Five's basic outfits. And when that transition happened, that's when they went from puppeteered heads to radio controlled heads for things like the Castle Show. So now that you know how performers can manually puppeteer a character's head, and now that you've learned the interactive character dialogue trees, it's time to combine the two of them into a whole new experience for guests. Where previous talking heads were stuck on a stage or in a small room full of hidden cameras, there is a special selection of characters that you can talk to all on their own, free roaming around the park that can literally interact with anyone. Stormtroopers, Darth Vader, Mandalorian, Kylo Ren, these one-of-a-kind character interactions are a whole new level of technology that are flawlessly controlled with just a flick of a wrist. Watch the left hand of these costume character members as they walk through the crowds and interact with people. At the beginning of the interaction, you can watch the performer sort of flick their wrist, which is a hidden trigger inside that sets off a conversation tree. From here, cast members inside can decide what branch of dialogue they want to pursue by bending specific combinations of fingers and flicking the wrist again. The position of the fingers is calculated and the dialogue will slide into the next branch at that flick. They can then iterate on the same response by continually gesturing with their wrists or make another finger combo and activate a new branch. 
This explains why they're so quick to point at you or signal with their arms or push you away with a gesture because their ability to speak is locked into them literally making these movements. Good performers really nail this and are near seamless with the movements. Darth Vader is actually a really great character interaction to keep your eye on if you're trying to spot the secrets. Because the character's performance is so intentional and slow, what you can watch is him reaching his hand out and then flicking his wrist quick to activate things or moving his arm. And luckily he has got that big cape so he can hide his hands inside the cape and make all the gestures and hand movements to keep the conversation going with no one the wiser. That in fact is James Earl Jones inside that costume, believe it or not. It's the only thing keeping him alive. And what happens when things go wrong? Well, they do, and it can get weird. One of my favorite interactions I found was a stormtrooper who clearly is trying to activate the interaction with a guest by shaking his gun, but it doesn't fire off. Not now, citizen. So when he lowers his hand and turns to his boss, Kylo Ren, he then yells at Kylo Ren, which sets off a whole, a whole moment for guests of a stormtrooper and Kylo Ren facing off. But to the credit of the performers, this looks like it was almost intentional. It's like it was part of the show. They covered it up flawlessly. Hats off to you, cast members. We are sorry, sir. Here's a great clip of Mickey Mouse just losing robotic servers in his jaw halfway through an interaction. The performer inside just has to kind of go with it. They can't just stop the interaction halfway through. Mickey is still talking. It's not like the photographer and character attendant can dive on him like the Secret Service. It's, the show must go on. The culmination of all of this combined technology was in an amazing play test that we saw in 2017 with the Fab Five talking meet and greet. And well, I guess you could call it the Fab Three because there are only three of them. These characters were free roaming, talking costumes controlled through the same hand gestures as before, but now it's not just some random face behind a Star Wars mask. This is the real deal. This is a talking Mickey hanging out outside, just chatting us up like it was Walt wandering around the park back in the day. But just like that, from out of nowhere, Disney took it all from us. All right, well, Disney didn't take all of it from us, but they took most, they took the heart and soul out of it. I'll tell you that much. We might still have the troopers, but there's no more talking Mickey. Now there's been a lot of back and forth about what the real reason for the departure of interacting Mickey meet and greet was. And there's a few things we need to consider here. One is just plain old maintenance. These are big, heavy robotic heads that require routine maintenance, love and attention, practically adding on an entire team of cast members just to take care of the robots. And that means money. Plus, there's all kinds of additional staffing. For this interactive meet and greet, you have to have more people in the room in addition to having someone off-site controlling the interaction for each specific room. You don't have a controller controlling multiple Mickey interactions at the same time. There is a controller for each room in that Town Hall Magic Mickey meet and greet. So that's a whole nother layer of added staff, which means money. And finally, just plain old demand. There is a massive demand for these talking characters to be everywhere at once. With an extreme cost of the heads, lengthy training required to roll out cast members on the team, and huge costs of making every character interaction meet and greetable, uh, it just wasn't gonna happen. They ultimately decided to just dump the tech for a much cheaper process, which is just static heads. If you think about it, you could meet Mickey in all kinds of places around the park, but there was only one place on the entire resort that you could interact with a talking Mickey. There was kind of a discrepancy for a lot of guests that just didn't sit well with them. If you would have started your vacation with your five-year-old and he, the first thing he did was meet talking Mickey and then the next day you're at Animal Kingdom having lunch at Tusker House and uh, African Mickey just comes up to you and just like wiggles, there's a little bit of sadness in your soul. You know, it isn't a sneaky secret around here how awesome Squarespace is at making websites easy. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy-to-use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with fully integrated commenting systems that support threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. 
These new third-party tools can help you manage your inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. Kenny and I will make sure to drop updates about new shirts on ChuckleKingdom.com as Jess and I continue our quest to make super serious theme park apparel. Go to Squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to Squarespace.com slash DisneyDan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So for now, I guess we just have talking head characters on stage and, and the character interactivity with mass characters like Kylo Ren. At, for me personally, at the very least, I'd love to see these talking characters be rolled out into parades. At the very least, we have these very specific scenes on floats and things like Fantasmic. I don't understand why there aren't talking characters in these types of events and only on stage shows. At, at the very least, give me talking Mickey whenever there is a pre-recorded track. Well, there you go. Now you are one of the few privy individuals to understand the magic technology behind Disney Parks interactive characters. And now the next time you're at the Batu Star Wars, have a good time Jedi boy experience, you'll be able to watch the characters literally make the choices on who to interact with, how to interact with, and why. Just watch that left hand and watch those finger combos because ugh, there's real magic in them fingers. Yikes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>